So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another class of PIB 247. In today's session guys, we'll be talking about the PIB news from 31st of May 2023 and there are some various uh, very important news today. Alright, so please listen to the class very carefully and let's begin with the very first question. Okay, let's start without any delay. And the very first question is about a scheme. So which of the following statements is our incorrect about recently launched assistance to medical device clusters for common facilities scheme. Now, a uh, few days back we have discussed about this, we have discussed the scheme, but uh, today uh, in the recent PIB release, they have provided some other details as well. So that's why we need to discuss this scheme again, right? So it is the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers which has launched the assistance to medical device clusters for common facility scheme. Now, as the name says, assistance to medical device clusters which means assistance will be provided for setting up of medical device clusters and common facility scheme common facility center right common infrastructure facility shall be developed uh, for the development of medical device clusters under this particular scheme and for that the financial assistance will be provided by the ministry of chemical and fertilizers okay so the objectives are to strengthen medical device clusters by providing financial assistance and to strengthen and establish more testing laboratories, right? One of the objectives is to strengthen the testing laboratories as well. If the scheme will be implemented from this financial year, that is 23-24 to financial year 26-27. And please remember, this is not up to the 15th finance commission period, that is 25-26. It will be implemented till financial year 2026-27. Okay. Now talking about the uh, financial assistance that will be provided under the scheme. So for common infrastructure facilities, for common infrastructure facilities, the government will provide 70% of the approved project cost or rupees 20 crore, whichever is less. Okay. While if it is the case of Himalayan states and Northeastern region state, if the project lies in uh, either Himalayan states or Northeastern region state, then uh, the support will go up to 90% of the project cost or 20 crore, whichever is less, right? Now, the second component uh, is for the testing facility under which medical device laboratories will be set up, right? Medical device testing laboratories will be set up and for that, the support will be provided up to 70% of the approved testing facility project cost or rupees 5 crore, whichever is less. While again, if it is the case of Himalayan and Northeastern states, the percentage will go up to 90% of the project cost or rupees 5 crore, whichever is less. Okay. Now, these are the three uh, for the upcoming three financial year the physical outlay and the financial outlay. What is the meaning of physical outlay here? So, if four is written here, this means in financial year 23 24, four common facilities shall be established and six testing labs will be established. Right. And uh, similarly here, uh, 48 crores in financial year 23-24 will be given for setting up of common facilities and 18 crores for testing lab. But you don't have to remember all these numbers, not at all required. You just have to remember the total 300 crore total granted aid as the financial outlay 240 crore uh, for common facilities, 60 crores for testing laboratories. And talking about physical outlay, so that same 12 and 12 each for common facilities and testing labs. Okay. So that is all about this scheme, guys. I hope it is clear. It has been launched by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. No. It will be implemented from 23-24 to 26-27. Bilkul sahi baat hai. That's absolutely correct. Its two components are assistance for common facilities and assistance for testing facilities. This is also correct. Under assistance for testing facilities component, Limit of support is 50% of the approved. There is nowhere, uh, nowhere where uh, the 50% project cost is provided. 70% or 90%. Right. 70% or 90% which means this statement is also incorrect. So 1 and 4 should be the correct answer because we need to identify the incorrect statement. Alright. Now let's move ahead to question number 2. Where has the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region headed by G. Kishan Reddy? G. Kishan Reddy is also the Minister of Tourism and Culture. Organized the Northeast Investors Roadshow as part of the upcoming first Northeast Global Investors Summit. This roadshow is not that important for us. What important for us is this first 
North East Global Investors Summit about which we uh, we have discussed a few weeks back as well but today also discuss करने में कोई problem नहीं है दोबारा से ठीक है दो minute का काम होता है तो जितनी बार कोई news अगर आ रही है दोबारा से revise ही हो रही है आपके लिए right so the Ministry of Development of North Eastern Region has organized the North East Investor Roadshow in Mumbai which is of course in Maharashtra and it was held as a part of the upcoming first Northeast Global Investor Summit, which will take place in New Delhi in the month of August, in the month of August this year. Okay. Now talking about this summit. So as I told you, it will take place in the month of August in New Delhi to deliberate, ideate and explore all the opportunities of trade and investment in the Northeastern region. Right. It will be organized, of course, by the Ministry of Development of Northeastern region with various partners. Like investment facilitation partner will be Invest India, industry partner will be Fikti, and knowledge partner will be Ernst and Young, right? Which is a consultancy uh, consultancy agency. Now uh, there are various focus sectors of the summit as well, like tourism and hospitality, uh, handlooms and craft, handicraft, healthcare, education and skill development, entertainment, sports, tea, energy. But you don't have to remember all these focus sectors, not at all, right? And remember, as part of this summit. Various roundtables have been organized in various northeastern states uh, under this particular summit. Okay, so that is all about it. And uh, where did it take place? It took place in Mumbai. Option B is the correct answer. Let's talk about question number three. Where has Ministry of Labour and Employment recently organized mega job fair? Come Shramik Chopal. So the Shramik Chopal guys was organized in Bhopal, which is of course in Madhya Pradesh. Now, why this Chopal was organized? Chopal, you can say it is a mega job fair for sensitizing the workers, particularly those in unorganized sector, about various social security or welfare scheme being implemented by the government of India, right? So that they can have the benefits of those social security or welfare scheme, and also to motivate and facilitate them to register under different schemes of central and state governments. Okay. It was organized in association with Department of Technical Education, Skill Development and Employment and Department of Labor of the Madhya Pradesh government. Right. And the job seekers employees registered on NCS portal of the ministry had participated in the event. Okay. I hope this is clear and uh, therefore the correct answer is what option C Bhopal. Bhopal is the correct answer. Guys. Question number four, which of the following findings of PLFS quarterly bulletin January to March 2023 are correct? See, generally I do not discuss the quarterly bulletins of any report, but this time exam is very near. So you never know the question is asked from uh, the question will be asked from uh, the quarterly bulletin. And that's why we are discussing the quarterly bulletin of PLFS and only the important things will be picked up and will be discussed. Okay. So PLFS way um, majorly the three things are provided. Number one, labor force participation rate, which is defined as the percentage of workers in labor force in the population. Okay, percentage of persons in labor force in the population. Then worker population, which is the percentage of employed person in the population. How much percentage of people are employed in the population that is determined by worker population ratio. And then employment ratio, which is of course is defined as the percentage of persons unemployed uh, due among the persons in the labor force, right? People who are in the labor force, usme se kitne log unemployed, okay? Because a two year, a two year old kid cannot be counted as a as an unemployed kid, right? Of course. So the people who are in the labor force, right? Among them, uh, how much percentage of people are unemployed? That is known as what an unemployment rate. Okay, so these three data uh, 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 is provided are provided by the PLFS, right? So this uh, picture where you can see for the previous five quarters, but you have to remember only the recent quarter that is January to March 2023. Okay, so if I talk about LFPR, so for male that's 73.5 percent, for female 22.7 percent, and overall it is 48.5 percent. Person when we are when we are saying person here, which means uh, overall. Okay. Now talking about worker population ratio, so that's again you need to remember for the recent quarter. <laughs> I'm sorry. For male, it is 69.1. For female, it is 
for female it is 20.6% and for person it is 45 point uh, overall it is 45.2 percent okay if it is not visible let me write it down that's 69.1 that 20.6 and that's 45.2 otherwise you can read it through the pdf as well 73.5 22.7 and 48.5 now talking about the unemployment rate again for this quarter only you have to remember uh, for male it is 6 for female it is 9.2 and overall it is 6.8 Okay, so this much data is enough regarding the uh, quarter, quarterly bulletin of PLFS, right? Now let's come back to the question. Labor uh, force participation rate of women in urban areas was 22.7 percent. बिल्कुल सही बात है, I think. Worker population ratio of men in urban areas was 69.1 percent. ये भी ठीक है. Overall unemployment rate in urban areas was 8.2 percent. 8.2 नहीं था, 6.8 था. So one and two are correct, which means the correct answer will be option A, one and two only, right? I hope this is clear, guys. देख लेते हैं फिर भी एक बार चेक कर लेते हैं. Twenty two point seven labour force participation rate of women, yes, and worker population ratio of men sixty nine point one, yes. ठीक है. Question number five, very very important based on the recently released data by DPIIT regarding the regarding what regarding the FDI. Foreign direct investment for the previous financial year, that is financial year 2023. So according to recently released data by DPIT, total FDI, FDI छूट गया यहाँ पे, has contracted by 16% to US dollar 70.97 billion dollar during financial year 23, compared to uh, 84.83 billion dollar in the previous financial year, that is financial year 22. Which of the following sectors have been have seen contraction in FDI in financial year 23 as compared to the financial year 22? Right, very very important news. So, Department uh, for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade has released data regarding FDI for financial year 23. Right, and total FDI has contracted by 16 percent to this much US dollar 70.97 billion dollars during the financial year 23. It was 84.83 billion dollars in financial year. 22, right? Yeah, spelling error है थोड़ा सा. Now, what are the reasons for this decline? Uh, for this decline, why this uh, FDI has contracted? So there are various reasons for decline. Like there are various challenges in the global economy. Like high inflation is there, expansionary monetary policy, and recessionary trends in developed economies. So these are some of the reasons for decline which have been cited by DPIT while releasing this data, right? Now top Three investing country once again it is number one pe Singapore followed by Mauritius and United States. Now talking about the top sectors, okay, where FDI received and is ये वही sector है यहाँ पे contraction भी हुआ है. These are the sectors where contraction has happened. So computer software and hardware manufacturing it has it is the highest recipient of FDI at nine point three nine billion dollars but it contracted by thirty five percent, right? Uh, at second number. Which received the FDI is service sector 8.71 billion dollar. Again, it is contracted. It has been contracted by 41 percent. Trading sector third number pe hai 4.79 billion dollar. It is also contracted, but numbers are not available for this sector. For automotive industry, it is 1.9 billion dollar, and it contracted by a whooping 72 percent. Right. Now, jump was also seen in uh, some sectors like drug and pharmaceutical. We have seen a jump of. I mean, jump nahi hai. Isme bata rakha hai ki in mein jumps aaya. Itna this much FDI has been received, right? With a slight jump, with a slight increase as compared to the previous financial year. So, drugs and pharmaceutical 2.06 billion dollar, chemical 1.85 billion dollars, telecommunication 713 million dollars, and construction 146 million dollars, right? And if I talk about the top three states and UTs, top three recipients of FDI, uh, top three states and UT, जहाँ पे सबसे ज़्यादा FDI आया, so number one पे it's uh, Maharashtra once again, Karnataka followed by it, and Delhi. Third number पे we have Delhi. But सब में क्या आया है decline आया है because there is an overall decline, तो सब में decline तो आना ही है, right? So let's come back to the question now. So which of the following sectors have seen contraction? It's uh, service sector, telecommunication, trading. I think drugs and yeah, automotive also. So drugs and pharmaceutical ko chhodke, 
बट वो ऑप्शन में नहीं है ओके किस किस ने कॉन्ट्रैक्शन सीन किया है तो सर्विस सेक्टर टेली आई थिंक टेली कम्युनिकेशन ही नहीं किया बट लेट्स चेक इट या सर्विस ओके सर्विस ट्रेडिंग एंड ऑटोमोटिव या सर्विस टेली कम्युनिकेशन में जंप आया है सर्विस ट्रेडिंग एंड ऑटोमोटिव इज द करेक्ट आंसर दैट इज वन थ्री एंड फाइव ऑप्शन सी राइट ऑप्शन सी वन थ्री एंड फाइव इज द करेक्ट आंसर Okay, so now let's move ahead to the questions in short. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this class, you can join the Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. And if you want to ace the examination this year only, you can enroll in the crash course, which has been launched by us on the website. It consists of ten mock tests, comprehensive mock tests with live answer writing, and it consists of personalized mentorship sessions conducted by me, Anup sir, and Shubham sir, and uh, what not. सब कुछ है इसके अंदर. So, if you want to ace the examination this year, you can enroll in the course. Question number six: Which renewable energy sector projects have been uh, recently granted complete waiver of ISTS charges, that is, interstate transmission charges, for a period of twenty-five years? So, there will no, there will be no interstate transmission charges in these energy sector projects. These are offshore wind projects, green hydrogen projects, and green ammonia projects. Right? Like, and this has been done. सो दैट जो मैनुफैक्चर है उनके ऊपर ज्यादा लोड ना आए राइट सो वन थ्री एंड फोर इज द करेक्ट आंसर ऑप्शन बी मोइल लिमिटेड इज द लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ मैंगनीज ओवर इन द कंट्री विद मार्केट शेयर ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑपरेटिंग इलेवन माइंस इन द स्टेट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र इन मध्य प्रदेश इट इज अड्यूल ए मिनी रत्न कैटेगरी सी पी एस ई सेंट्रल पब्लिक सेक्टर एंटरप्राइज अंडर दी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कंट्रोल ऑफ विच मिनिस्ट्री so that's very easy question it works under the ministry of steel uh, option c is the correct answer india in which country has agreed to create opportunities for lifelong learning building a future ready workforce and making knowledge and skill development a key pillar of strategic partnership right this country in question is singapore option d is the correct answer Question number nine: Which PSU has won the prestigious Green Tech Safety Award 2023 under Safety Excellence category for its outstanding contribution to improve workplace safety in the year in the previous financial year 22-23? Very important question. The PSU in question, guys, is Rashtra Ispat Nigam Limited. Option A is the correct answer. And the last question for today: Where has CSIR, National Institute of Science, Communication, and Policy Research? In collaboration with Unnat Bharat Abhiyan and Vijnan Bharati, organized a training workshop on incense stick making. Agarbatti, right? Incense stick is what agarbatti. So this was conducted at Hari Duar, which is in Uttarakhand. Option B is the correct answer. Okay, guys. So that's it for today. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. And with this, we have ended the month of uh, May, and now. Uh, june has been started so around uh, 37 38 days are left for the examination so just give your best during the upcoming uh, days please do not think of giving the next attempt because some of you are thinking ki okay we are not uh, prepared well so let's uh, let's uh, you know give the next year's attempt please do not think like that because it will again happen in the next year as well theek hai ye sabke sath hota hai you are not the ओनली वन जिनके साथ ऐसा हो रहा है ठीक है सो जस्ट गिव योर बेस्ट जस्ट ट्राई टू गिव योर बेस्ट राइट एंड ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट आई सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास गुड बाय टेक केयर एंड गॉड प्लेस